Lost in the Shadows, my terrifying encounter on the Hawaiian farm. So a couple of years back, I found myself caught up in the creepiest hair-raising adventure on a farm in Hawaii. Now, let me make one thing clear from the start. I'm not the brightest bulb in the box, and responsibility has a way of slipping through my fingers like water. But man, this night was like no other. It was a stormy evening, the sky illuminated by bolts of lightning that danced across the horizon. The farm, located on the outskirts of a sleepy Hawaiian town, had an eerie vibe to it. To be honest, only a crazy person like me would think it's a good idea to trace around there after sunset. As I wandered deeper into the farm, something caught my eye, an odd shape lurking in the distance. Being the curious bonehead that I am, I couldn't resist investigating further. With each step, my heart pounded against my chest like a tribal drum. The tall grass whispered and rustled, whispering secrets that made me gulp down. The rain poured down, drenching my clothes, as I stumbled upon the creature. And oh boy, it was like nothing I had ever seen before. This thing had wings that stretched out further than my lanky frame and eyes that glowed like two tiny suns in the darkness. My initial reaction? Jaw-dropping terror. My s As I took another step forward, the creature let out a blood-curdling shriek that sent shivers down my spine. The one day is perfect, and the season began to be killed by- the creature lunged towards me, talons outstretched. My finally snapped out of my stupor. I bolted, legs pumping like mad, my heart threatening to leap out of my chest. The storm raged around me, thunderclaps adding to the chaos and rain soaked my body, making it feel twice as heavy. I zigzagged through the farm, my mind racing as I tried to outmaneuver the terrifying beast. My brain wondered what kind of job I had, but that seemed like a distant memory compared to the nightmare unfolding before me. Every gust of wind carried the creature's chilling screech, a constant reminder that I... Finally, with my legs aching and lungs burning, I stumbled upon a small shed. I dashed inside and slammed the door shut, cursing my own stupidity. The shed was damp, smelling of rotten wood and no do, but in that moment it felt like the safest place on earth. Leaning against the wall, I caught my breath, my heart pounding against my ribs. That's when the twist of comedy came. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I realized the shed was filled with chickens. Squawking and clucking like there was no tomorrow, they seemed completely unfazed by the monster lurking just outside. And just like that, my fear transformed into laughter. I couldn't help but chuckle at the absurdity of it all. A dumb guy chased by a creature, seeking shelter in a chicken-filled shed. The adrenaline slowly subsided, leaving me bone-tired yet grateful to be alive. As the storm passed and the morning sunlight peeked through the clouds, I mustered the courage to step to my surprise, there was no sign of the winged monstrosity that haunted me throughout the night. Maybe it was all just a crazy dream, or perhaps a figment of my overactive imagination playing tricks on me. All I know is that I escaped unscathed, but if there's one thing I learned from that harrowing experience, it's that responsibility might not be my strong seat, but boy does it make for an unforgettable story. The Midnight Stalker. So, a few days ago, in the dead of night, I found myself unemployed and restless. My name is Lily, by the way. Now, I may come off as a bit untrustworthy, undetermined, and quiet, but deep down there's a spark of insecurity mixed with a strange confidence. And let me tell you, that night that spark was burning bright. 
It was midnight when I found myself driving aimlessly through the desolate highways of New Hampshire. The wind howled outside, notching the eerie town that seemed to consume the whole state. The sky was painted black, devoid of any stars, as if a sinister veil had been cast over the night. As I drove, my mind played with the idea of finding something, anything that would break the monotony of my pitifully empty days. I craved excitement, a twisted sort of adrenaline rush that could numb the doubts and fears that constantly gnawed at me. And that's when I saw it, a sign that read, Welcome to Wendigo Highway. Now, I know what you're thinking. What kind of name is that? Well, folks around here say that this stretch of road earned its name due to the chilling stories of Wendigo sightings. Wendigos. Mythical creatures that were once human, but turned into monstrosities through cannibalism. Yeah, I know it sounds far-fetched, but in a place as eerie as this, anything is possible. Curiosity compelled me to keep driving, despite the twisted knot forming in the pit of my stomach. The road snaked through dense forests, casting long, eerie shadows on the asphalt. The silence was deafening, save for the howling wind that seemed to whisper secrets only if you comprehend. Another sign appeared out of nowhere, illuminated by the flickering glow of my car's headlights. A shiver ran down my spine as I glanced nervously into the rearview mirror. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, hunted even. Undeterred, I continued driving, my heart pounding against my chest. The night grew darker, the wind fiercer, as a forning you to turn back. But I couldn't resist the pull, the undeniable allure of the unknown. Suddenly, a pair of glowing eyes my breath hitched, and my grip on the steering wheel tightened. Ahead, in the distance, stood a figure, tall and emaciated, its body contorted in a grotesque manner. My mind screamed at me to run, to escape from this nightmare, but the strange confidence that lay hidden within me pushed me forward. I had to face this to see what lay beyond the stories and legends. As my car neared the creature, I could feel its malevolence radiating through the thin veil that separated us. Its pale skin stretched tightly over elongated limbs, and its eyes burned with a sinister hunger. This was a being consumed by its own monstrous desires. In a surge of reckless audacity, I brought my car to a screeching halt, the headlights casting an eerie glow on the creature. It knew I was there, lurking in the shadows, observing, trembling. Confusion and fear battled within me, but the adrenaline coursing through my veins pushed the fear aside. With a final breath, I stepped out into the abyss, my eyes locked with the Wendigos. Silence engulfed us, the wind howling a mournful lament. And then... But instead of attacking, it hesitated, its glowing eyes studying me with curiosity. Who are you? I whispered, my voice barely audible over the wind. Suddenly, it turned on its heel, disappearing into the forest, leaving me dumbfounded. The night swallowing the creature and its secrets. In that moment, I had faced my fears stepped into the unknown without hesitation. As I made my way back to the car, a smile crept upon my lips. Untrustworthy, undetermined. These paradoxical traits have guided me through this spine-chilling encounter, and I couldn't help but feel a new sense of purpose glowing within me. Driving away from Wendigo Highway, I couldn't shake the feeling that my life had been forever altered. From that night forward, I vowed to embrace the darkness that lay within me, to seek out the unexplained, and to never shrink away from the mysteries that awaited in the shadows. And so the Midnight Stalker was born.
the Howling Highway. All right, folks, gather around because I got a story to tell that'll make your skin crawl. Now, this happened about 10 years ago when I was a cocky park ranger down in the heart of Louisiana. They called me Buck, short for Buckshot, by the way, and I was known for being loud, brash, and outgoing. Ain't nothing much scared me, but this here tale, it's something else. It was a wild evening in the heart of winter, and the hail was coming down hard, like God himself was throwing a tantrum up there in the heavens. Now I was holed up in my small cabin, sipping on a warm cup of joe and trying to ignore the racket outside. My roommate, a quiet fella named Jake, was off on his own business that night, so I had the place to myself. But that's when the phone rang, shattering the silence of the storm. I snatched it up, not expecting anything much, but what I heard on the other end sent a shiver down my spine. It was Mama, crying and yelling into the phone, something about family trouble down in the city. Now I ain't the type to back down from a fight, so I jumped in my old truck and raced towards the city lights, ignoring the slippery roads and the ice trying to sabotage my mission. But as I hit the highway, that's when I heard it. A deep, guttural howl resonated through the hailstorm, slicing through the air like the screech of a banshee. I glanced around, trying to catch sight of what but the thick darkness swallowed the world around me, with only my headlights brightened off the inky blackness. The howls grew louder, surrounded me from all sides, and I could feel my heart pounding like my mind was racing, trying to make sense of the situation. Were there hillbillies or some wild animals out here in the middle of this storm? It didn't make no sense, but I couldn't shake the feeling that whatever was making those howls, it wasn't natural. Suddenly, my truck's engine spluttered and died, leaving me stranded on that wretched highway. Panic set in, and all I could do was hunker down and pray for the madness to end. But just when I thought it was all over, a pair of glowing eyes peered at me from the edge of my vision. My heart raced as I squinted through the window. The figure emerged from the darkness, its hulking form silhouetted against the hail-lit sky. It was colossal, its spines glinting with each bolt of lightning. I clenched my fists and screamed at the top of my lungs, challenging the beast with every ounce of courage I had left. The creature let out a bone-chilling roar, echoing through the storm as if it were answering my cry. But just as it lunged towards me, its claws poised to strike. A bolt of lightning illuminated the sky, revealing the twisted, half-human face of my own family member. Shocked and disbelieving, all I could do was stare, unable to comprehend the horror unfolding before me. The monster let out one final howl, this time tinted with pain and sorrow. In the aftermath, I found myself sitting in my broken down truck, rain pouring down my face and wondering if what I had just seen was real or a figment of my imagination. But deep down, the howls of that creature still haunted me, lingering in my mind long after the storm had passed. So folks, that's my tale of the Howlin Highway, a night I'll never forget. Sometimes things happen that defy explanation, and it's up to us to face them head on, no matter how wild or mysterious they may be. And trust me, it was a hell of a ride. The Goblin and the Ghostly Desert. It was a windy morning in the late 80s when I found myself cruising down the long, desolate highways of New Mexico. My name's Jake, and I've been a truck driver for as long as I can remember. The open road is my life, and I'm always alone with my thoughts in this steel cabin. Now, I ain't much of a social butterfly, 
you won't find me striking up conversations at truck stops or mingling with the locals. But one person I always had on the line was my mama. My dear old mama, bless her heart, was always happy to listen to my ramblings and offer the occasional word of encouragement. With my ears tickled by her voice, I drove into the ghostly desert of the National Park. The place was spooky enough already, but I had a delivery to make, so I had to push through. The wind howled in my ears. The bones of the ancient cacti rattled like an old man's knees. The sun had yet to peek over the horizon, bathing everything in an eerie darkness. Even the chirping of the desert critters seemed to have been swallowed by the wind. Suddenly, up ahead, I saw something peculiar. Nestled among the gnarled branches of a dried up tree was a flicker of movement. The hairs on the back of my neck stood on end as my truck rumbled closer. That's when I saw it. A goblin-like creature with scaly skin and a twisted grin. Now, you might think that in times of danger, I'd rev up my engine and hightail it out of there. But my indecisiveness kicked in. I mean, who even knew that goblins were real? Golly, what internation is that? I muttered to myself. My years of conscientious driving and abiding by the rules had made me a cautious man. I couldn't simply run away and leave that creature causing trouble. With a deep breath, I hopped down from the truck, my boots crunching in the sand. This was no longer expansion, and it was the first word. I later in myself with not to setting it. It intentionally, as soon as my fee fit. Gee, goblin, oh sir, I reckon this here's a national park and you ain't got no business causing trouble. You best be on your way. I stammered my words barely. Then, without warning, it lunged at me. Instinct took over, and with a quick shuffle to the side, I narrowly avoided its attack. I couldn't believe it myself, but there I was, wrestling a goblin in the middle of a desolate desert. With each roll in the sand, my mind raced, knowing my mama would have a heart attack if she heard what I was facing now. But I had to do what was right, and in that moment, I made a decision. With one final firm grip, I managed to subdue the goblin. It had underestimated a truck driver like me. The goblin's defeat left me breathless, my t-shirt clinging to my skin from the exertion. Adrenaline mixed with triumph coursed through my veins as I loaded the creature into the back of my truck. Driving with newfound purpose, I delivered that goblin straight to the park's ranger station. They thought I was a madman, but once I convinced them, they took appropriate action. And that, my friends, is the tale of how an introverted, conscientious, and indecisive truck driver from way back when encountered a real-life goblin in the ghostly desert of New Mexico. You may not believe it, but I can still hear its wicked laughter in the wind when I pass through that park. The Witch of Mirror Lake all right, folks, gather around and listen up. I've got a story that'll send chills down your spine. It was about a decade ago up in the misty hills of Wyoming that I found myself face to face with pure evil. Now, before I get to the good parts, let me set the scene. It was just before dawn, the sky painted in eerie hues of gray and blue. Fog hung low, like a ghostly blanket, making it hard to see. The air was damp and cold, seeping through my bones as I made my way towards a secluded lake nestled in those lonely hills. My child, you see, was in the military. A soldier's duty is to protect and so. And on that day, my mission led me to this mysterious place. Wyoming's known for its vast wild landscape, 
but this lake in particular had an air of otherworldliness. It was in the way the mist swirled, dancing in whispering secrets. When I used breath, when I called my lips, and I did eat it, my life and my breath, the first thing I noticed was a small wooden rowboat resting by the shore, a peculiar sight indeed, as there was nobody else around for miles. But driven by curiosity, I climbed in. The surface of the lake was like a mirror, reflecting the foggy landscape above. It almost felt like I was rowing into another realm. After what seemed like an eternity, the dense fog began to lift revealing the shape of a tiny island in the center of the lake. On its rocky shores stood an old, decrepit cabin. I could hardly believe my eyes. Who would build a home in such an isolated place? Without hesitation, I pulled the boat ashore and stepped onto the island. The air grew colder, sending shivers down my spine. As I approached the cabin, a feeling of malevolence filled the air. It was as if everything around me screamed to danger, urging me to turn back. But I couldn't. I had a duty to fulfill. With a creak, the cabin door swung open, revealing a haggard figure clad in tattered robes. Her hair was wild, the color of midnight, and her eyes burned with an otherworldly fire. There was no doubt about it. I was face to face with a witch. She cackled, a sound that sent chills down to my very core. Welcome, dear soldier, she hissed, her voice both melodic and deadly. I nodded, my heart. I come seeking knowledge, but I mean no harm I managed to say. My voice quivering, the witch tilted her head, studying me with her piercing gaze. You are different from the others, she knew. Tell me, what drives you? I took a step closer, driven by a sense of compassion. I fight for freedom, for justice. A flicker of something akin to respect passed through her eyes. I shall grant you the knowledge you seek, but be warned, soldier. This path you tread is treacherous, and darkness shall accompany you until your last breath. With a nod, I watched as she disappeared into the depths of her cabin returning moments later with an ancient book. Its pages were yellowed, her voice low and haunting. Remember, knowledge comes at a price. As I held that book in my hands, I felt a surge of power and fear. It was weighted with the burden of thousands of years of dark magic. But I accepted it willingly, understanding that sometimes one must face the darkness head on to protect the light. And so, my friends, I left that island. Through foggy mornings and starless nights, I clung to my newfound knowledge, using it to protect the innocent and vanquish evil. But the twist in her tale, the part that still haunts me when the night is still is this. The witch of Mirror Lake never truly left. Her knowledge, her curse, became a part of me. And now, even a decade later, I find myself grappling with the darkness that seeks to consume my soul. So there you have it. The tale of a soldier. Confident. Friendly. But fear not, my friends. For even in the face of darkness, there is always hope. And as long as there are those who fight for what is right, evil will never prevail.